Police say a woman showed up at the hospital feeling sick. Tonight, her husband is in jail, accused of poisoning and killing her. The future of the abortion pill could have major impacts even in states where abortion is legal, like Colorado. Who says history doesn't repeat itself? Michaela Schifrin has wrapped up a record-breaking season. We'll see how she did on her final race. We will get to all those stories in a moment, but right now fire crews are busy in the Poudre Canyon area fighting what they are calling the Arrowhead Fire. So far, this fire is about seven acres in size, 50% contained. They started responding to this fire around 1130 this morning. We've not heard of any injuries at this hour, but there have been a small number of voluntary evacuations around the city of the town of Rustic along Highway 14. This is the same area that burned just over two plus years ago during the Cameron Peak Fire, the state's largest wildfire ever. Nearly 210,000 acres of the forest, national forests up there burned in 2020. And then last year in areas of the burn scar, we saw some deadly flash flooding in the canyon. An Aurora dentist is behind bars tonight. Police believe he killed his wife by poisoning her. 45 year old James Tolliver Craig, who has an Aurora dental practice, Summerbrook Dental, was arrested early this morning on first degree murder charges. Aurora police say Craig drove his wife to a hospital on Wednesday. She was complaining of severe headaches and dizziness. Police say her condition went downhill quickly. She was put on a ventilator and then declared medically brain dead. Investigators started looking into her death and discovered she had been poisoned. The suspect is due in court tomorrow morning. The trial for a woman accused of killing her stepson back in 2020 is scheduled to begin tomorrow. Letitia Stauk is charged with first degree murder, among other charges, in connection with the death of 11 year old Gannon Stauk. She has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Jury selection in El Paso County set to begin tomorrow. The judge said he planned to bring in a pool of 110 jurors before narrowing it down to 12 plus some alternates. Trial proceedings are expected to last at least six weeks. Somebody shot and killed a man near a Denver gas station this morning, just a few blocks away from Denver Health. Denver police got a call about shots fired at Santa Fe Drive and 6th Avenue just after 730 this morning. This is close to a Sinclair gas station. Police believe police say that they found a man dead with a gunshot wound. Police say the gas station manager made the initial call for help and said that a possible suspect had been seen leaving the area on a bicycle. Investigators are now looking at surveillance video. And Denver police are hoping for some new leads in a case that is growing cold. They say Zachary Smith was shot and killed in the area of North Quebec and North Quince streets on September 10th, 2020. The reward for a tip that could lead to an arrest is now up to $20,000 in this case. They're asking you to call Crime Stoppers if you have any information. The fate of the abortion pill and its use nationwide is now in the hands of one judge in Texas. Last week, U.S. District Judge Matthew Kazmierich heard arguments about whether the FDA's approval of mifepristone should be allowed. Mifepristone is one of the pills in the standard two drug regimen for a medicated abortion. The FDA first approved this 23 years ago and more than 5 million people have used it since. The judge could order the FDA to temporarily withdraw its authorization of this drug, effectively banning its use nationwide, even in states where abortion is still legal. Nine News reporter Jalisa Irizarry shares with us the impact that decision could have here in Colorado. The last year put one thing into focus. Expect the unexpected. For abortion advocates, reversing Roe v. Wade moved other arguments forward. For us advocates, we know that our community is really depending on us to protect them in this moment. Aria Bolaños Perea is the Strategic Communications Director for Color, a Colorado group advocating for reproductive rights for Latinas. While Color is not an abortion fund, they push for choice. Over 68% of Latinos across political ideology, across gender, age, religion affiliation, believe that abortion should be protected and that, poli that politicians shouldn't tell us what to do with our bodies. A federal judge in Texas is expected to make a decision soon on whether the abortion pill, mifepristone, will continue to be accessible, a move that could further hinder abortion access throughout the country, having a ripple effect here in Colorado. The Dobbs decision and the overturning of Roe, we saw an increase of over 500 
percent of out-of-state patients coming to Colorado for care. So Colorado will see not only an increase of patients out of state and also from in-state. Wyoming is not waiting for a judge's decision. On Friday, Governor Mark Gordon signed a bill banning the abortion pill in the state. It's the first law of its kind in the country and one that's leaving some exhausted. How many times is it going to take for us to convince that we deserve anybody? deserves the right to make the best decision for themselves. But those with color say they won't give up. All they can do is expect the unexpected. So we are preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. Judge Kazmierich said he will issue his decision as soon as possible about a request to ban Mifepristone while the trial proceeds. If there is a ban, Planned Parenthood states, while the combination of Mifepristone and, and misoprostol are often how medication abortions occur, they say misoprostol by itself is a safe and effective way to end an early pregnancy. So essentially what is now a two-drug regimen could be done still with one drug regimen. It's just, it seems like a lot of providers prefer to use something with Mifepristone in it. The two drug regimen is the most popular in the United States. So yes, um, they obviously can continue doing it with just simply one drug. According to Planned Parenthood, okay. it is safe and effective. Okay, interesting. It's interesting conversation around outside of just the abortion debate about deciding about FDA approved drugs. So I guess we will, we'll see where that goes. Jalisa, thank you. Coloradans could soon get some of their prescription medications through a machine. A bill that would make this legal is moving through the state house now. That bill already passed the house and the Senate committee is now scheduled to discuss it on Thursday. While medicine would be dispensed by a machine, you yeah, kind of think like a vending machine here, under this legislation, a pharmacist still would have to have a presence in this process. That pharmacist would have a video chat on the machine, talking with patients, confirming identification, and the machines are also designed to be resistant to break-ins. Colorado is not the first to consider these automatic pharmacies. Places like Arizona, Illinois, and California already have them in use. And Governor Polis now has a bill on his desk that would allow more Colorado teachers to qualify for loan forgiveness. The legislation got final passage in the Senate on Friday. This bill allows more teachers to get financial assistance with the goal of preventing them from having to get a second job to make ends meet. It's a beautiful Sunday out there. You're taking a live look over downtown Denver. This was a great day to get out, stretch your legs, walk a little bit after what's been kind of a weird yeah. <laughs> once again cycle of like a little snow, a little warmth back and forth this past week. It feels like we're finally emerging from the never ending, ending, ending winter. However, we do have more snow in the forecast for this week. I'll tell you what, you were right. A beautiful Sunday afternoon turning into a beautiful Sunday evening. Certainly have a few more clouds overhead here in the Nine News backyard, but temperatures quite mild out at the airport. We're sitting at 56 degrees. Those winds out of the west about 15 miles per hour. So the wind chill not a factor at this point. HD Doppler radar really showing you what we are in store for. While we are pretty clear, just a few clouds here across the front range in the eastern uh, plains. You can see those clouds starting to move in from the west and behind it will be the precipitation. It will be in the form of snow. This is going to be happening tomorrow. It is the first of a series of storms that will be making their way into our state, bringing snow to the western slope as well as to the mountains. As for the metro area tonight, we're looking partly cloudy, breezy, temperatures dropping down to about 28 degrees. We dropped down into the teens overnight last night, so not quite as cool. A little bit breezy with those winds out of the west northwest gusting up to 20 miles per hour at times. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, a bit breezy as well, but temperatures really quite mild as well. 57 degrees, that is actually are normal for this time of the year. That is our forecast high for tomorrow. Winds out of the south 10 to 20 miles per hour. And it is going to be a nice day. We're looking at 50s across the front range and eastern plains. 60s down there in the southeast corner of the state. 30s and 40s up there in the high country. 45 in Grand Junction. But we talked about that snow. We do have some winter weather advisories to talk about for the high country and the western slopes. We'll talk more about that coming up in your full forecast in just a bit.